She'd have that one. Labrador agenda, I think that is just for me to spread my musical taste. I just want to force my taste in music upon other people. I think that's like the whole idea. I run most of the label and I have a guy out here who helps out as well. It's called Christian. But I didn't start the label, it was a guy called Ben Tuan who started it like 12 years ago. Or 13 years ago actually. And I, I got in touch with um, with the label right away because he wanted to release my band Acid House Kings on a compilation vinyl. And also he wanted to release Club 8, my other band. And we got to know each other and we had the same taste in music and similar ideas how to run a record label. And so I got started with it. I think I've asked Bang to who came up with the name like a number of times but Either his explanation wasn't any good, or I just don't remember it. Uh, so there is no, no real reason why it's called Labrador. No, 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 I didn't. Yeah, I don't think he likes dogs very much. <laughs> In the very beginning, uh, it was mostly bands that come from... I'm from a small town called Aarhus in the south of Sweden. And most of the bands were, I mean, either friends of mine or people from the same city actually like or, or I was in the band myself so it was like all the other ones were as house kings club eight starlet and Lesless, and the band called mondial and another one called waltz for debbie and all these bands were from the same area it was just a very good scene around that, the, this city Aarhus because back back then uh, the swedish music scene was quite bad actually a few years before Labrador, all the Swedish indie bands were playing some kind of, not like shoegaze bands, but they had like, they were like half-hearted um, attempts to be shoegaze bands. It was all very lame. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I, we were lucky to, to find a sort of um, scene of ourselves. Well, everything that is not my taste in music <laughs> is bad taste in music, so it's quite simple. <laughs> but I mean, there, there are degrees of bad taste in music. Like right, right now we have like a contest in Sweden. It was actually just finished, but it was like some sort of contest in Swedish, musical contest on TV, which is right, super popular. Eurovision. Exactly, Eurovision, a song contest. I mean, and that's really grown to be amazingly bad taste in music. I mean, you... Have you heard the stuff? It's, I mean, you, sh you would be surprised. I mean, nowadays it's just like uh, people who write songs where they sing the same word over and over again. The, the one who, song which won this year was called Popular, and it goes popular, popular, going to be popular, popular, going to be popular, 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 going to be popular. And then there, there's a track which came in number second. It goes like in the club, in the club, in the club, in the club. And it goes on like that. I mean, that's quite bad. And people like them. I mean, they vote for them. Oh, I like that one. I remember it. In a way, it's becoming increasingly bad because people need to, to remember the song the first time they hear it. And so people come up with like more and more stupid songs. Like, and then it's very important to have the same word a million times so you don't forget it. Usually it's like the, the next release is all, always the most exciting thing because I'm so exciting to, to hear when you have signed a band and they start and recording you hear demos or so on and see, see how the progress is being done I think and then one and see how the album turns out. Uh, usually I mean I'm very happy about the albums otherwise I don't release them actually. We, it's happened a couple of times that we had to throw away full albums. But I mean, usually that doesn't happen. So usually it's just a very pleasant surprise. And I mean, that's the most exciting thing. But me memorable stuff, I, I don't know. I think, I mean, the, la the first maybe three or four years, 
I mean, we were very, very low scale, sort of very super indie. And we started out releasing seven inch singles in 500 copies and so on. So I think, I mean, it was quite memorable in a way when we released the first Radio Department album, because that's sort of the first success we had. The album got the Swedish charts and so on, and it was like a big hype and everything. And that was sort of like a moment when we felt we were going from one place to another. Dan Treacy of Television Personalities, he wrote the liner notes actually first, and they ended up on the promotional copy of the album. And I wanted them to be on the album as well because I'm a big Television Personalities fan, so I thought it was pretty cool. But then I wrote this thing for the press release, and then the band really liked it and said, well, let's put that on the album instead. And so, so we did. Oh. But so they didn't, they really liked it, they didn't disagree at all. No. Mm, well, I think, I mean, we of course work with all kinds of media to, to get the stuff out. And it seems like, uh, like film and TV can be quite uh, useful as well if you have songs in series that are okay. For example, when we had songs in uh, Grey's Anatomy and the scene was actually quite nice. It was just like someone driving a car and then they put on the radio and it was the marionettes lost. Uh, it was actually a very nice scene in, in the TV series, I think. After that you could immediately notice how that song became very popular. I mean, so so th these kind of things really do have an effect as well. For a while we didn't do that many music videos. There was a, so, some sort of like a gap, a little bit like a gap, when people weren't showing that much videos on TV and it has, wasn't that super big on the internet either. But now, I mean, it seems quite useful on the internet. So, I mean, yeah, I think it helps a bit. But I mean, we wouldn't put like uh, huge amounts of money into making videos because it's really difficult to get that back. But a good thing about, I mean, nowadays is that it's so simple to make videos, I mean, to make it look nice and also that it's only this big when people look at it. So actually, maybe it doesn't have to look that good. I don't know. <laughs> It's more important to have like a good idea. The next release coming out, which when someone sees this, is already out, is my own band, Acid House Kings. We, released, we haven't released anything in six years, so I mean, it's, for, for us it's a big event. We release two albums every ten years. Uh, and it's called Music Sounds Better With You. We recently signed a new one called The Vakra Livet, which is the brothers from the band called The Marionettes and will release their debut album in May. So that's sort of the new stuff coming out. We we'll also just actually signed another new artist which is like a 16 year old girl who lives on an island outside Stockholm which is really amazing. Sounds like a bit like a mix between Kate Bush and Dusty Springfield or something. It will be really uh, but she hasn't recorded anything properly yet. I mean, actually she will start recording on this third, Thursday with uh, Philip of the Marionettes and the Vakra Livet. It all comes together, you know. We just wanted to make something out of the, the, the anniversary because it was, partly it was 10 years, but it was also 100 releases. So, I mean, it was like a big event. And first we actually thought about doing just something very small about it. And then we thought we should have like a big booklet and like a, uh, a release that has something from everything and so on. Something that would really like represent the first 10 years. That maybe I had to listen to, you know, had to. But I had to listen to all the releases we've ever done. And I was like feeling really proud. Most of our releases have sort of stood the test of time. I think it's, like, it's a very nice introduction to the label. And also, I mean, we, when we had the party, it was like very sort of successful because yeah, it was like overfull. It was like, I think it was like 1500 people or something. So it felt kind of nice to get a bit of appreciation for it. So to actually notice that people do like the label. It's not only me, there are a couple of other people who like it as well. <laughs> come here like around 
10 o'clock and I sit down at the computer and I sit in front of the computer until 6 o'clock and then I go home. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's something like that. Yeah. Emailing, writing stuff and uh, listening to stuff. If someone would look at it, what I'm doing during the day, I, I'm not sure it would look that interesting. But I love doing it. This summer was I had like an email free week or something and that's probably the first time in, in 10 years. Usually I have to like be on top of things even if it's like in the middle of night or something. You still have to make sure things are happening correctly and so on. Maybe sometimes when it doesn't happen, the things doesn't happen the way it should, it can be slightly stressful maybe. But I mean, usually it's just quite nice. <laughs>